Okay, hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of On The Wrist from Off The Cuff. Today we have the full review for you of the new for 2018 Christopher Ward Trident C60. Now this particular uh, Trident C60 is uh, its newest iteration as far as the blue dial model goes. Now the blue dial has really been a staple of the collection. It went away a little bit after the rebrand and has finally come back in a new hue and tone which I think are a vast improvement over pretty much every other iteration that they've had in the past. So first off a little bit about the brand. Christopher Ward was founded out of uh, London, out in the UK. They are a more of a boutique brand uh, than I consider a micro brand just because their wide array and selection of watches and themes and genres that they cover, everything from motorsports to aviation to military to vintage style, um, you know, and then of course to their dive collection. They are really a brand that has ascended kind of beyond that micro brand status, um, which there's nothing wrong with being a micro brand, but I just think it would do Christopher Ward a bit of a discredit to just consider them a micro brand because they just offer so much. Now, a little bit about uh, this type of watch before we move on. This is of course a dive watch. Now some key common correct characteristics and design features and design language you're gonna look for when uh, sourcing a dive watch. You're gonna be looking for something that is water resistant, of course, you know, normally through some type of screw down crown. You're gonna want something that's tough, legible, with a dive time bezel um, and a diver's extension if on a bracelet. So with that said, let's go ahead and get this piece in hand and take a closer look. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the first thing you'll notice is that this tone of blue is actually a much deeper t uh, shade than the previous blues. Now, under the hot studio lights, of course, this is gonna appear much brighter than it is gonna look in real life, but I assure you that this is much uh, of a darker tone. And just for comparison, very quickly, as you can see, the blue tone is definitely less of a bright and vibrant tone. Even also another thing you'll notice is that the dial itself has more of a satin or matte finish versus the more glossy finish on the wave dial of the previous generation. Another quick difference that you'll notice is the crown guard. So as you, I'm sorry, the crown itself, as you can see the crown uh, there is just, it, it ends very abrupt and these edges here on the teeth are quite sharp. On this side you'll see, you know, apart from the new logo they're added, that the, the end of the crown there itself has a nice bevel to it so it's nice and rounded off, won't dig into your wrist or the back of your hand or anything like that. So that's another thing that is, uh, you know, a, more of a functional difference than just the design difference that you'll see. So other than that, these are still pretty much very similar watches, very similar spec. One of the, you know, the main things that changed basically are those little touches, um, which is a nice thing about this particular line because the C60 has been around for so long that it has received small refinements here and there, and, and which brought it to where it is now. And I think this is probably the best iteration of the watch. Um, you know, of course, there's other special ones that have in-house movements or even chronometer grade uh, standard ETA movements. But um, as far as the blue dial model, and you know, I love blue dial divers. I think this is pretty much their their best offering to date. Um, and it really has a lot to do with just this tone of blue, which I think is going to be so much more versatile. Um, you know, when you're wearing it versus something that's going to be such a bright blue that can be very polarizing, you know, not a lot of people necessarily wear such bright colors. Me being one of them, uh, I normally stay in the darker um, spectrum when it comes to the blues that I wear. So this is going to go really well. And then I also like the kind of more toned down sedate nature of the dial. Um, because it isn't a glossy finish anymore. It has more of a matte finish. You can still notice the texture, but it's not something that's going to be as hyper reflective. And, um, you know, it's just not going to have that same glossiness. And I think it actually ha adds to me a little bit more dimension to the watch. Although, of course, the dial is a lot cleaner now, um, or it's because it's basically debadged there at the 12 o'clock. And then we have the, of course, the name Christopher Ward there at the nine, which has been quite controversial, but 
for me personally, I don't, I'm not bothered by it at all. I think it's honestly a much better logo than here, you know, crh.ward. London, um, I, there's nothing that's really especially good about that logo besides the placement here. Um, I think the font is better. I, I, I just think it's a better logo. I shouldn't, I shouldn't even call it a logo because it's not a logo. This is the logo here, which is the Swiss flag and uh, London's flag there transposed. But um, really the you know, I think the, the name being spelled out is, is better. The placement, you know, I think we could probably put this same logo here right there at the 12 and you'd probably make a ton of people happy. But for me, I kind of almost see it as now um, the lack of branding in this upper, um, you know, half of the watch almost is the branding uh, because it, it's, it's actually becoming quite a recognizable feature of Christopher Ward is that you know, pretty much all the information is here in this bottom half, and then the top half is very clean and minimalist. But anyways, <clears throat> those are my thoughts there, but let's go ahead and, you know, cover some of those general things. Of course, this is the Trident, the C60 Trident Pro 600 uh, in 43 millimeters. It's, um, it's very nice. It has a 13.1 millimeter height. It has a 51 and a half millimeter lug to lug. It's made out of, uh, of course, 316L surgical stainless steel. <clears throat> it has a flat sapphire crystal, which is uh, 3.4 millimeters thick, which is very thick uh, and very nice. Um, it does have inner AR coating, which is great. And of course, since it's a blue dial, you're not really going to see the tint of any type of AR coating on the dial, which is great because the blue will just kind of match up with the dial. The bezel here is 120 clicks. Very notchy. Okay, lines up just beautifully as you can see it does have a screw down crown and very nicely signed and as you can see there just looks great it has that nice fine bead blast finish there to really make the uh, crown stand out and the nice thing is because of uh, the new logo used there versus CW it's one of those ones where, you know, of course that's upside down. This can really, you know, you can have it line up anyway and it's still going to look good and look right. I normally like to go about as tight as I can then kind of turn it back um, so it's not resting on the threads there. But really nicely done. It does have that beautiful uh, guilloche wave pattern there and with the, of course, the more matte finish itself. Oh, before that, let's go ahead and make sure we take a look at this awesome case back. As you can see, very nice, deeply stamped case back there. The updated uh, font as well on the branding on the rear, but I think it all looks really, really nice. It's really great quality piece. This is something that really hasn't been up for argument for a long time. It's really the point of controversy is the the new logo and the rebranding but other than that i think everybody can agree that as you can see just this thing is a quality timepiece there the finishing is just beautiful and they go the extra mile on little areas where you just wouldn't think for somebody to think about you know just like the back of this clasp there do you see the soft chamfering right there up and down the part that's going to actually be on your wrist i think that's just beautiful and it just shows a great deal of thought and uh you know appreciation into the wearability of the timepiece and not just the uh flat out looks so let's go ahead and uh now we can dive a little bit deeper into the dial. As you can see, we do have the date complication at 3 o'clock there, nicely framed. This does have super lumin Swiss Superluminova. It glows green. The whole watch, of course, is Swiss made, as you can see on the dial. It is water resistant to 600 meters or 
2,000 feet, which is really great. Of course, deeper than you'll ever need, but <clears throat> it's more of a testament to the robustness and the overbuilt nature of the dive watch. And honestly, that's kind of what divers watches are all about. You know, it's kind of like, you know, uh, sports cars or supercars. Do you, are you ever really going to drive 200 miles an hour? No, you're probably never going to in your life, but it's nice to know that your car can do that. So I think that's kind of the broad appeal of diver watches is that they are so capable and they can do so many things and uh, withstand so much pressure. Um, and it's nice to know that it can do that and just lets you know that it's going to stand up to your daily life if it can stand up to such extreme conditions. Now moving on to the bracelet, as you can see, it's the same bracelet, but um, you know, since the since they actually did update the C60 in general to the ceramic version and the and the 600 meters water resistance, this thing has been absolutely a superb upgrade. As you can see, really finely finished. And then you have, of course, the new branding on the clasp. But the clasp is really nice because it actually, you know, it's it tapers with this bracelet. And one of the nice things is it tapers down to 18 millimeters, which you don't have a big chunky clasp. So this is going to be very comfortable on the wrist. And then, of course, you also saw why it'd be comfortable because of the extra chamfering there on the folding mechanism, which is all milled out beautifully here. And then, of course, this is more of a stamped piece. Um, for the buckle itself, but when you look at it, it's definitely not flimsy at all and they're packing quite a bit of uh, tech in there because they do have their adjustable clasp where basically you can push it in as you can see here and then you pull this lever, pull it out and you just click it back in to what's comfortable for you. So really nicely done. Let's go ahead and get this on the wrist. All right, as you can see, it wears really, really well on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. Of course, it's gonna appear very large uh, in an up close kind of wrist shot or a wristy, but as you can see, it really sits nicely. Those, those lugs actually do curve down and wrap around the wrist really well. You know, by nature, diver watches, especially um, watches with this type of death rating, are going to be on the thicker side. But I think the design cues that this Christopher Ward has have really assisted in making it not work quite so large. Now, of course, the dial itself, to me, actually um, contributes to the large nature because of the skinny indices and then having everything pushed out to the edges of the dial versus kind of their first generation where the indices were actually pushed closer to the center of the dial with a minute track or seconds track, even tenths of seconds. I think it was um, fifth of a second track went all the way around the outside that kind of pushed all the indices towards the center which did make the watch appear a bit smaller and ever since the upgrade um, you know to the 600 meters water resistance and the newer baton style indices it actually does make the watch appear uh, visually a bit bigger although on wrist it definitely feels pretty much exactly the same and, you know apart from the fact that the original model was only 300 meters water resistant and had a bit of a thinner case back um, you know it's it still wears quite nicely on wrist really more like a 42 I believe this actually is probably closer to a 42 and I believe the uh, 43 might just be uh, measuring from the bezel it's one or the other it's either the bezels 42 and the bodies 43 or vice versa either way this thing uh, is definitely one of the more wearable uh, full-size dive watches. I wouldn't call it oversized. I wouldn't call it mid-sized, of course, but uh, as far as like a full-size dive watch goes, this is definitely one of the better wearing ones, as you can see here. And again, like I mentioned with that clasp, I think it's just really great because, you know, most 22 millimeter watches aren't going to taper down to 18 millimeters, but here, as you can see, it, it tapers down really well and the clasp itself is quite thin, uh, which also helps it wear also quite comfortably. So really nice, as you can see, the finishing also quite outstanding. Let's go ahead and get this in the dark for some loom shots. Okay, let's go ahead and hit the lights. As you can see, the 
glow is quite nice um you know looks really great of course those are thin indices um but the loom's definitely been improved over the years and i can see that it is definitely a bit more potent than the last iteration and definitely more potent than the first few iterations of the c60 but one of the things i like to do during these um loom shots is get in some low light transition just to give you a bit of a look at the watch under less than optimal lighting conditions because honestly my hot studio lights do a great job of imitating uh, outdoor daylight but when you're transitioning indoors or maybe getting in and out of a vehicle your watch if that's where you're going to spend most of your time so you, that's how your watch is going to look to you most of the time it's not always going to be an extremely well lit time and one of the nice things about these low light transitions is you can actually get a really nice look at the way the light plays on the finishing and that is really telling to the quality of the finishing and the consistency in the brushing and polishing so and then also that tone of blue you can see here that it's actually much darker even uh you know with direct light on it there you can see that the bezel still look, appears quite dark and the darker contours of the waves also are coming off much darker this tone here let me get a little bit closer you know that's pretty realistic to what you're gonna normally see the watch appearing like when it's on your wrist so let's go ahead and finish this off now we've definitely spoken about the c60 so many times in the past what else is there to say um well you know honestly some closing thoughts this is their most versatile blue tone yet and objectively it is the best generation of the c60 yet because it's been improved uh across the you know all this time uh, it's not like they've downgraded anything if anything they've just made everything about this watch better objectively now subjectively some of you might not like the new logo or the placement or maybe some of the uh, design features but you know just looking at it for what it is it is definitely the best trident c60 um, that there's been so far especially for the blue now um as far as comparisons and some other options out there you know to me the thing that makes the c60 stand out is that it's really more versatile than um you know some of its other swiss contemporaries uh, now you compare it to let's say the oris aquas now the aquas does have a very nice beautiful blue darker blue tone um you know uh, from the previous model the previous generation that i love i own um but that has and even the newer models of the aquas do have proprietary lugs one of the nice things here is you're going to have those standard 22 millimeter lugs so you can put this on a nato you can put it on a leather strap you can nylon rubber whatever you want it's definitely going to be very versatile and from that standpoint you can also compare it to something like maybe the rato d star 200 also with proprietary lugs um you know blue dial and, and all that so it's one of those things where that's something to think about and then as far as the you know the longine hydro conquest or the certina ds action diver those also have some you know practicality issues they actually are using uh 21 millimeter lugs versus 22 so it's not a standard width and then of course even the c60 38 millimeter models are running a 20 millimeter lug so that is also pretty optimal versus having kind of that odd number um, but one thing to mention is of course the with uh you know how things are changing and advancing some of the competition has stepped their game up so you know longines um this year at basel world they're gonna they're gonna be releasing an updated um hydro conquest with a re more refined dial and a ceramic bezel insert also it's changing from the h link to more of a traditional um three link style um and it looks really good and i'm sure the pricing is still going to be a little bit up there um that's one of the beautiful things about christopher ward is i mean you can get these for well under a thousand dollars you know normally under eight hundred dollars depending on what type of configuration you get and what time of year because there's always 
all types of great deals and promotions. So that's one of the really nice things that really make this a huge value proposition. If you just want to go purely off specs, um, you'll find a lot of watches right now that are a little bit similar. Um, but that aren't going to be 600 meters water resistant. So, and they're definitely not going to have such a long line. And, and really, Christopher Ward has built a lineage for itself with the C60. It's been a respected model for years and years. Um, so that's one of the nice things. Of course, there are new models that are coming out. There's old models that are being revived and updated. And you know, um, it's it's a tough space in that you know thousand dollar Swiss made. Uh, dive watch segment, but I think today in 2018, the Christopher Ward C60 Trident Pro still offers a very good value. Um, you know, and some other comparable models um, today, you maybe consider the Steinhardt Ocean Line, the Turby Lawless, um, the Tag Aqua Racer, Raymond Weil, Freelancer Diver, the Devosa Argonautic BG. Now, you know, I will be doing another update as far as you guys might know if you're fans of the channel, you've been watching for a while, you know that one of my biggest videos, you know, that I think has like 200,000 views at this point plus and growing was a big Blue Diver, Swiss made uh, Blue Diver face off. And um, it was a great video and I've been looking forward to kind of compiling more and more new blue uh, Swiss powered, Swiss made divers to compare again and kind of compare a new class against itself and then the new class versus the old for one huge kind of battle royale. So definitely stay tuned and make sure you're subscribed for that video because that's still to come. Um, but really, I guess I could say the bottom line is this is still one of the best Swiss made boutique divers out there. And you know, an honest contender for best overall diver under a thousand bucks. Now, are there better divers out there? Yes. Are they gonna cost a lot more? Yes. So um, definitely keep that in mind. This this piece is something that, you know, at around uh, $800 price tag is going to be punching way outside of its weight class. And that's something that's really cool and, and uh, unique, I think, to Christopher Ward. It, it's tough because anytime I review a nicer uh, watch these days, everyone kind of asks, you know, or will tell me, well, the, why would anybody pay $1,500 or $2,000 for that watch but they can get a C60 for, you know, $700, $650, you know, during a Christmas sale or something like that. So this piece is definitely a huge fan favorite. It does have a big following and uh, rightfully so. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, if you wanted to actually see some of the other comparisons to, um, some other blue divers definitely stay tuned. I actually did a initial impressions video comparing this to, of course, the original um, C60 with the aluminum bezel and the offset date. Uh, and then also this previous model that was featured here uh, uh, before the um, before the rebrand. So if you wanna get a closer look at the blues, make sure to check out that video. Um, if you like the video, please do hit like, and if you haven't already, do subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks guys. Bye.